blemishes, spots, pimples, bumps. There are so many words we can use when it comes to acne, so it can be a little bit confusing. Don't pick your skin, pick bandage. Welcome back to the Acne Channel with your girl Liz, aka Pretty Progress 23. So today we're going to talk about the six different types of acne, so you guys know how they form, what they look like, how to treat them, and so it's going to be skincare 101. So there are two categories: non-inflammatory acne and inflammatory acne. The first category, non-inflammatory acne, are comedones. So this includes blackheads and whiteheads. They're not red or sore or painful. It's usually embedded in the skin and the body hasn't responded to this spot as a form of infection yet. So it's kind of just sitting in the skin and sitting there idly. And it's actually really easy to treat compared to inflammatory acne, which leads me to category two. This includes papules, pustules, nodules, and cystic acne. This type of acne is usually painful and it's bedded in deep layers. It's usually red and swollen, and it's a bit harder to treat. So let's zoom in and focus on each one of these types of acne so you have a better understanding of each. Number one is whiteheads. In most cases, acne happens because of clogged pores, maybe because of bacteria, clogged pores, and dead skin cells. When it comes to a whitehead, it's a closed comedone. So it's a long pore that is closed from the top and it's kind of like underneath the skin. So it's embedded within the skin without having any opening. Okay, try over-the-counter products such as salicylic acid. This really helps. So it dissolves the cement that holds the sticky cells together and that prevents whiteheads in the future. You can also try benzoyl peroxide. 2.5% is awesome. 10% is way too harsh. It's a marketing strategy to get you to pick the highest percentage, but it actually comes with more adverse side effects, especially if you have sensitive skin so start with 2.5% and see how you go the next non-inflammatory acne is called a blackhead now with a blackhead so the top part is oxidized and you get that black spot you can also try the same method in terms of over-the-counter products such as salicylic acid benzoyl peroxide it just takes a little bit longer because the top part is kind of hardened and it's oxidized I don't recommend pore strips whatsoever it's a cheap quick method but it's only short-term results when you put the pore strip on your nose not only is it pulling out the blackhead, but it's also ripping the first layer of your skin, ruining your skin's mantle, making it more irritated in the future. And because you're getting rid of your excess oils as well as your natural oils, your skin is going to be like, oh my god, where is my natural oils? Oh, I need to reproduce it. And that's when your oil glands go into overdrive. So steer away from pore strips and take a chemical exfoliant instead. That helps gently remove the clogged pores and your dead skin cells. So I highly recommend that. You can also try to use a facial cleansers with a silicon nub and just gently go across your nose. I don't really recommend using like walnut scrubs or or you know ones that are irregular because it can create micro tears in your skin so steer clear of that and stick with more gentle methods so now on to the inflammatory acne, which leads us to the four remaining type of acne. The first one is called papsules. So the contents of your blocked pore is kind of spilled out to the surface and it's creating that red inflamed skin. But the thing is there's no pus inside. And again, this can be used as a similar method because it's like bacteria on the outside of your skin. You want to kill that bacteria by using over-the-counter products such as salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide. But at the same time, when your skin is really inflamed, you want to heal internally. So that that means also having you know antioxidants nourishing your body with the right foods so it can calm the inflammation down the next one is called pustules so with the name there is the word pus in it which means there is pus inside your inflamed zip and this usually happens in clusters where they be on your chest your face your back and you can also use the same methods over the counter products a lot of the times dermatologists and doctors also recommend you to try antibiotics or birth control because hormones in your body can also lead you to have acne however i highly recommend you to steer away from antibiotics and birth control because there are a number of side effects where it damages your gut so what i recommend is on top of using topical treatments also try to heal internally as i said with papsule pimples nodular acne is the next one this is a more severe case so with nodular acne it's flesh colored or red bumps on top of your skin um, and it could be elongated so it's deep within the tissues and this doesn't have a head so do not pop it because you will damage the skin surrounding skin tissues and nodules in this case feel like hardened thick knots 
Whereas the next one is cystic acne. They're a lot softer and they have pus filled sac inside. Um, cysts comes in clusters and they are also another form of severe acne. It is larger in size compared to the first two that I was talking about in the inflammatory acne category. Cystic acne and nodular acne is really, really hard to treat. Sometimes people get steroids injected in those spots for the inflammation to calm down, but it is a long process where I highly recommend you to heal holistically. Because nodular acne and cystic acne is on the deeper layers of your skin, topical treatments such as benzoyl peroxide, salicylic acid might not work as effectively as it would for surface level pimples. And when I mean by holistic approaches, that means changing your lifestyle in many different ways, having adequate sleep. Your skin heals its best at night. If you're staying up late, it's only going to spike your stress levels. And as a result of those stress levels, you're going to produce excess sebum, which leads to a greater chance of clogged pores and inflamed skin. I also recommend you to up your water intake. Hydration is so important. Not only can you keep your skin hydrated topically, but also internally. That helps nourish your skin as well. And hydration is important because of your digestive system. If you're eating healthy food and you're not drinking enough water, it's gonna to lead to constipation. And with constipation, you're just clogging up the toxicity within your digestive system and your skin is the largest organ. If you're not getting rid of that waste when you're going into the toilet, it's gonna to show in your face. So that's why it's really important important to ensure that you're drinking water, eating the right foods, drinking enough, also exercising to increase that blood circulation. With nodular acne and cystic acne, your blood is very stagnant. And if your blood is stagnant, there is not a renewal of nutrients underneath your skin. So therefore, when you're doing facial massages, when you're exercising and increasing the flow, you have a better chance of healing at a faster rate. So those are some of my recommendations. I hope this video was helpful. Whatever type of acne that you have right now, I hope you find a solution for you. Um, and I hope you also enjoy the journey of finding solutions. So don't just wait for clear skin, but enjoy the ride. Um, it can be really tough to rewire your brain in a way where you see your journey as a positive kind of lesson, a positive journey, but you guys can do it. Big kisses and have a lovely day. Bye guys.